Conan the Barbarian, at least my first exposure to it, the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, is probably still today one of my favorite movies of all time. I still use the soundtrack for, um, it's usually always in my rotation in, uh, when I do soundtracks and music in the mm -hmm. background, my games. I mean, the music's phenomenal. I thought the story's still phenomenal. Um, yeah. The Destroyer, totally you know, eh, there's some good That's parts or some, you know, but the Red Sonja, don't see that at all. That is total trash. But that's a different discussion <laughs> for another day. Um, and not even the same to talk about the new Conan movie. But that movie really like blew my mind as a kid. And it definitely uh, de helped me develop as a player and as a game master later on. Tower of the right. Elephant is still one of my favorite short stories to read. I'm going off topic. I just want to say that, <laughs> <laughs> that um, I was very happy to read this real book. This book is Conan, An Age Undreamed Of, which is the core book for the Conan the Barbarian RPG series from Modifius Games. What, what's your impressions of the book? Well, um, you know, my first impressions, of course, is the book is massive. It's, it's over 400 pages huge book um it's a nice layout very uh, evocative art um i also really appreciated and was heartened by the introduction where, where it uh, talked about the the history of uh howard and the conan stories and um you know even mentioning that this was the first game written with the help of uh robert e howard scholars and um you know that gave me a lot of hope and uh, when I when I read the book, you know that promise was fulfilled. Um, like with their with their Star Wars uh, Star Trek game, uh, Modifius Games cares about the licenses that they produce, and, and in the same way that they were clearly clearly they are Trekkies. Um, they are clearly fans, true fans of. Um, Ronnie Howard and uh, his his Conan stories. Uh, they really take the source material seriously, and they really understand it. And, and I really appreciate that. And uh, you know, I thought it was a, a, a very a, you know a very thorough game. I found the uh, the rules to be um, crunchy, as uh, as, the, as the terminology is, which means they are very they are very detailed. They're very thorough. They are even complex. Um, but not difficult if you take the time to understand them, particularly if you get the GM screen, which will lay out the charts, which will really help you. But you do have to, um, you know, you, you have to really study the rules. Um, character creation is very involved, um, but, you know, the rule book takes you step by step through every, um, every part of it. It also includes some streamlined um, character creation if you want to make your characters quicker and faster and uh, even comes with um, some pre-generated characters. But Manny, what did you think about the rules? Um, so fortunate for me, I've been reading the Star Trek role-playing game made by the same company. And um, uh, there was a lot of, I was very familiar to what they were describing. The idea is that I'll, I'll try to be as brief as possible because the, the rules do tend to be very detailed, especially with character creation and especially with yeah. uh, a little bit with sorcery as well. But the idea is that um, you try to get two D20s and get a bunch of D6s. That's what you need pretty much for, for the system. Um, when it came to um, character creation, um, it, it is very detailed. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, it will take you a little time to get used to it. Uh, but again, if, if you want it to be Conan, <laughs> if, if you want that feel Conan, I, I, I think it's necessary. There was nothing of it that I thought that it was unnecessary, you know? And it goes really deep. It goes into like backstory, just like it's almost in Star Trek, but, I thought, but it goes a little bit more deeper in Star Trek. Star Trek, you, you have like a bit of your background, your, your life path, um, and uh, skill set from what you learn. And it's like that, but it's a little bit more expanded. It goes into culture. Um, um, it, it goes into uh, what your family did and how that affected your learning. It goes into uh, all, all sorts of things. Um, it's very detailed. Um, it does add sorcery to it, which um, I'm personally still trying to learn. I think I have to play it to really, really get it and understand it. But I do like how that sorcery, it seems very hard to do, very, just like in the books. You know, it's not common at all. Um, right. And, um, right. And it's, it's, could be very 
uh, chaotic if, if you don't know what you're yeah. doing. Yes. Well, yeah, it's it's very dangerous, and uh, it's it's if not flat out evil, it's wicked. You know, a, a, a lot of a lot of role playing games that are using this pulp source material um, have this little bit of a hurdle because because in the original stories, magic was mostly what the bad guys did. <laughs> Sources yep. were crazy, cackling people who, you know, lived on piles of bones and sacrificed people. But players, being players, want to use sorcery. And and so different games tried to um, allow their players to use sorcery. And, and uh, what this game does, and what a lot of games, a lot of pulp games did, is they, they said, yes, okay, fine, you can use sorcery if you want to. But it's going to be really dangerous, and it's going to be really wicked, and you might blow yourself up. <laughs> the next section was the setting, which was beautiful. Um, very thorough um, in the different spots. Now, the stories, um, uh, Howard's stories, covered a vast range of cultures and landscapes. And this book um, gives you a, a, a pretty good overview of them all. And there will be source books. There's already source books out which focus on different parts of um, the setting. And the, the great thing about the source books is not only the focus on parts of the setting, but rather like the Howard stories themselves. Um, each setting implies a certain type of gaming. The source book that details the um, uh, the pirates. Um, and, and the and the the, uh, the navies and the archipelagos um, gives you rules for naval battles and ships, and so it's not the the source books are not going to be just setting. There are also going to be more rules, and uh, this is kind of neat. They also follow um, Conan's career, you know. So you had Conan the Wanderer, Conan the Thief, Conan the King, Conan the Pirate. That's the that's what you get in the source books, right? So each book, each source book is going to be about okay. So this place is about the cities, and so this is um, going to be about intrigue. Conan the King, and this is this it's going to be Conan the, the the Wanderer, and this is going to be about wildernesses and things. So you know that was really cool. What did you think of the game mastering section of this book? Ah, well, the game mastering section was my favorite part of this. As you said, this is this is not D and D. This is a different type of game, and um, you know, obviously, part of that is the rules. You want the rules to back up what the game's trying to do, and I think they do that really well. Um, and part of that is the setting. You want the the setting to set up um, the game you want to play. Uh, but it, but um, beyond that, you also need to run the game in a certain way, and uh, you know, it's helpful if if a game will give you hints and tell you how to do that. And I think uh, their game mastering section does a wonderful job of telling you how to create Conan adventures. Um, you know, pulpy adventures that focus on uh, thrills and danger and savage non-heroes. <laughs> you, uh, it also gives you really nitty gritty, um, you know, um, details on how to use the rules to foster the theme. So uh, when we're talking about the rules, uh, we didn't mention that this game uses momentum in the same way that the Star Trek game uses momentum. So just uh, quickly, momentum is, um, so when you make a spell skill check, if you roll extra successes, you can put them aside into a momentum pool, which you or anybody else, any of the other players, can use to get ad get advantages on future rolls. So uh, that kind of fosters exactly what it says, the momentum of action, right? Your characters go in, this is they succeed, they build up a, a momentum of success and they can keep going. Um, on the other side of the screen, uh, the GM has Doom, which is, um, which is a resource he collects. Um, which is kind of the momentum of the bad guys, which represents um, a kind of uh, imp impending doom, right? Things get harder and, and, and uh, things get darker and they are building towards a big climax. So the, the rules section tells you how all that works. 
And the GM section tells you how to use that to create um, pulp adventures, which I thought was really useful. And then to end it all off, there's a, um, there's a sample adventure at the back of the book, uh, which is a great first adventure. It's actually written to introduce the, the PCs to each other. It takes, it, you know, it takes place in the aftermath of a great big battle. Uh, the players meet each other. They find out they're their survivors, and they're they're stranded in this uh, this horrible, hostile territory. And, and they have to kind of band together. And then there's some choices for them to make. And it ends up with a climactic evil. There, there's ruins. There's uh, there's epic foes. There's a big underground monster. It it just feels like a wonderful Conan story, and it's a great introduction to the themes of the game. So. You know, this is a this is this book is a great, um, you know, introduction and uh, toolkit for creating Conan stories. It's really got everything you need right here. I would suggest. Yeah, yeah. I would suggest um, you know be a, after you bought the book, I would suggest uh, buying the GM screen and the dice. Yes. And then if you like yes, it, you can keep going and pick up the the source books. So uh, if we were to do a rating, this is a hard, hard, hard 18 for me. Yeah. Um, my personal opinion, because, well, it's Conan. Um, yeah. The lore, good job with the lore and Ryan the lore, which is, I think, that would really stand out to me more than anything else. The rule system is, is good. It's a good rule system. Uh, I, I don't think it's uh, too complicated. I think, like you said, if as long as you do your homework, it should be fine. It's not that complicated. I've seen worse. Um, sure, sure. But, but um but yeah, it's it's it's. it's um, I think it's a it's a book that I will have tremendously fun running and playing. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, personally, uh, I think I'd go with a sixteen, just because uh, for my own personal taste, the rules are a little too crunchy for me. Not that they're mm. bad. It's just that I I prefer a little bit looser rule system. But um, for for what it says it does, it does a great job. So there you go, right. Conan. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, yeah. If you played it, let us know what you think in the, in the, in the comments below. Uh, you have a great day. May Krom be with you.